Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Holly Randall Unfiltered. Today, I have porn content producing couple Maven Dahl and BDSM Neem. But before we get into this podcast, I want to just do a quick shout out to my sponsors, Adam and Eve. If you go to adamandeve.com and use code HOLLY, you will get not only a second item at 50% off, but you will also get 10 free items plus free shipping, which is pretty amazing. So go to adamandeve.com, use code HOLLY and get tons of free stuff. All right. So back to my guests. So as I mentioned before, um, these two are a married couple living in Arkansas, and they do what so many people do these days and create their own content at home and sell it on their own personal platforms. But you guys ran into a bit of a snafu, may we say, with uh, the Arkansas court system. Basically, you got into a really nasty legal battle over um, some alleged public videos. But before we get into that, because that really is like the bulk of the story and what I want to talk to you guys about, do you want to just give me a little bit of background about like maybe how you guys met and how you guys got into producing content in the first place? Yeah, um, actually we met working together at, shall we say, Hot Topic. Uh, I, I didn't read oh my god that is I, I, I did read and, and I, I so fit in there uh, <laughs> I did retail management after broadcasting and uh, and I met her and you know. and it was uh, we got yeah. together fairly quickly we've been together for 10 years um, married 5 3 children <laughs> and um, about 5 years ago we were just needing a little extra money and I was on a mommy forum of all places, and a question was asked about how to make extra cash. And someone who was a cam girl actually came on and brought it up. And I came to him and I was like, hey, have you ever heard of cam sites? And he was like, well. No, never. No. What's it talking about? <laughs> You've never visited one in your life. <laughs> oh, no, never. Not in my life. <laughs> but no, he was like, actually, yes, I have. Oh, yeah. Let me show you which ones are good. <laughs> and so I spent a, a couple of months just kind of watching and going back and forth on, did I, did I want to try to do that? Because I'm a little bit shy and, and everything. And I didn't know if I would be comfortable um camming but after a couple months i decided oh we'll do one night one show and see how it goes and so i tried out mfc and it went pretty good so i cammed for a couple of months before we actually started making any content and for a while we just made it here and there before making a full-on switch to content creation. Mm -hmm. And that's what we've done for the last several years, primarily. Several years, so yeah. five or six. Five. So it went from being like just a side gig that you guys did sometimes to like your full-time job. Full-time, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we've put a lot of work into building our profiles and everything. And her, and her brand and yeah. you know, things like that. And so... Two years in was when everything happened, and actually we kind of stopped for a minute. Um, we were scared. But, when we, you know, when everything happened, yeah. we were like, they told us that we could continue doing what we're doing because they can't really have hold anything against us because of what we did. Even our lawyers told us that. And then they gave us the actual instructions that we were not allowed to take like, any like, of our content down, down so it because it was still an investigation. So yeah. we were still making money on something we were supposedly in trouble for because they wouldn't allow us to take it down. Including it was weird. the public ones. Yeah, including so, the public ones. It's yeah. weird. It was really weird. It, it was, That's it, really strange. The whole thing has, was always incredibly strange to us. Um, and... Uh, so after a few months, because also our names were everywhere, international. Um, Your legal names. Yes, our legal names yeah. with our screen names um, and everything. So it was kind of hard to go straight back into the job market. We so were scared. I mean, really. I mean, after a little honest. while, it was like, well, if it's okay to keep creating, and this is how and we're still making our money, then we just kind of slowly picked back up. And This is uh, how paranoid we were, though. Like, we went to our lawyer and we were like, okay, well, if what we did wasn't technically illegal, 
in your eyes, you know, and you're defending us. Well, is it okay for us to continue? And he's like, yeah, he's like business as usual. He's like, you make your money, support your family. They would build yeah. your business you were building. And it's funny because as reluctant as we were to even get back into it, I went to him three different times and asked that same question yeah. before we ever <laughs> decided that we were going to like literally about a nine to 12 month period where we were just like, really, is it really okay? Are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure it's okay? I mean, it was like one of those, just, we were so paranoid to do it again. And then finally he was like, no, really, you're fine. He's like, I mean, look at how they've drugged this out for almost three years. Or, you know, at that point it's about year. two years or okay. year and a half. And, uh, and he goes, they, they have nothing. They can't do anything. Just go about your business. I said, okay, fine. And we did. And so let's talk about the actual kinds of uh, content that you guys create. Like, do you have specific niches? that you fulfill. I read in the article, and by the way, we, I want to give a shout out to Gustavo um, at XBiz who brought us together, wrote the article on you guys. Um, he's yeah. been on my podcast as well, and he's just a really great journalist in the adult in industry. So um, shout out to Gustavo Turner. Um, but uh, so the, the, the crux of your problem were your pu public videos, but that wasn't even a majority of the kinds of videos that you shoot, right? So what do you, um, what are the, most what is mostly the content that you guys are known for my most popular content is actually my uh cut holding videos and our cut holding videos when because a lot of them are solo still mm -hmm. um and he kind of just performs when <laughs> when asked when, for, needed. when needed but uh cut holding has been my biggest selling niche for milf yeah, and milk. Milf. Uh, no, and that's, that's uh, during pregnancy, it was it was a it was a big one for me too. But even then, a lot of it was centered around the cut holding. Um, so for those of some of our listeners are not as well versed on the adult industry as others. So could you explain cut holding to people who may not be too familiar with that fetish? Sure. Let me take that one. Yes, since you're the one that brought me into. <laughs> Uh, it, it's, it's an awkward fetish. Um, first of all, it's awkward. To admit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, first of all, it's awkward to admit that it is, it can be arousing for one to watch their significant other do things with other people. And it can be yeah. like, and it has to be done so, so delicately too. Like it yeah. really does. You know, you have yeah. to, under, there's a lot of understanding, compassion and yada, yada, yeah. yada that goes into it. But the, the, the main thing is, is that you are sharing probably well, the most important person in your life in an intimate moment with somebody else. I mean, that's what cold, cold holding is. And, and it's, it's, it's a way bigger fetish than I, I even I could imagine that it was yeah. when even we first, when we dabbled into, dabbled into it, into it. And, it and then people were like, gentle. wow, more of that. And we're like, it can be a right. gentle, sensual sharing, or it can be the full force, more yeah, humiliation, more humiliation dominated into which we, we kind of go from whatever both, both yeah. ends of that. Although I would say I find the, the sensual cut calling to be. She is so <laughs> funny. Give her three cups of coffee in the morning and look out. But you give, give her like a bull whip or something. She's like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually not the more dominating she's not, person. Like personality wise, she is in charge. And it is, it's, but, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's undercover though in charge. Like, she doesn't yeah. want anybody to know she's in charge. It just better be understood. But most of my fans, I think, see me as more intimidating for yeah. some reason, even though I'm not. That's just the brand that was created somehow. And we don't really understand how, but I always told her, I was like, she comes off as a dominating person, even though she doesn't mean to. So, <laughs> yeah, if you're looking for like, the niches that she falls into now, I would say it's the co holding and just a little bit slight of the like bossy domineering type. Yeah. Uh, and it's funny because it's almost the exact opposite of her actual personality. It really mm. is. <laughs> so. No, but that's pretty common. I think that a lot of people tend to explore like a different side of their personality oh, in that, sex. Right? Yeah. You know, people tend to switch. Like I'm submissive in bed, but I'm pretty dominant like in my day-to-day -day life. And also, too, I think the cuckolding thing speaks to society's fascinations and struggles with monogamy. You know, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people who would argue that monogamy is not natural. 
In fact, um, for those of you who aren't familiar with my interview with Chris Ryan, go back and watch it. He wrote uh, Sex at Dawn, and he talks about the idea that uh, monogamy actually grew up alongside agriculture when a sense of ownership actually became something that was introduced into like the hunter or gatherer state, because before it was an egalitarian society, everybody ch- shared everything, right? Including yeah. sexual partners yeah. and the group raised the children together. So with agriculture came the idea that um, you owned land, you owned a surplus of food and who would you pass that off on? Who would you pass it on to? Well, your children. Well, you want to make sure your children are your children and not some other guy's children. So that's kind of like, it's a really interesting theory, but you know, the longer I've done this podcast and the more people I talk to are into polygamy um, or who are swingers, it just goes to show like monogamy doesn't necessarily need to be for everybody. My my parents were swingers, you know, and I'm in a monogamous relationship. I always have done monogamy. Um, but I have definitely like had those fantasies about like watching my man with another woman. Um, when I went to Amsterdam when I was 17 and Ooh. I hired a prostitute as my first threesome, my first of two in my life, um, she wasn't that into me. And so eventually I just gave up and just watched my boyfriend at the time have sex with her. And it was actually a turn on for me. Nice. And I don't know, there's something about like, the idea that this man that you have, that you treasure, that you enjoy sexually, that you find sexy, like it's kind of cool to watch somebody else enjoy him as well. It's like baking you a really delicious idea. cake. Yeah. And it's like, you got it. You got it. That's it. And I say in our That's own it. relationship, we filtered in and out of monogamy. But when we first got together, we actually discussed. That's why we got together. Wouldn't it be cool to actually be able to be in a relationship where you could be swingers if you wanted to? Mm-hmm. I remember folding t-shirts, closing <laughs> a store one night. Now we're standing, we're standing next to each other, folding rock t-shirts. And I was like, That's man, cute. I was like, <laughs> I was like, my life sucks. I was like, I just want to be able to like swing and have fun. And she's like, me too. And I was like, ooh. I was like, what are you doing? What are you doing after we close the store? (laughs) Yeah, I think that that's, I think that's an even harder concept for women to grasp because, you know, the idea of like keeping your sexuality as a prize only to be given out to like the highest bidder, you know, is something that a lot of people can't get around. Yeah. I so. still feel like sometimes I'm like, I'm not supposed to do that. And then I'm like, wait, mm-hmm. yeah, I can, I can do what I want. I'm a grown woman. So yeah. yeah. You guys also talked about um, doing these scenes with a kind of real like communication understanding between you two. Mm-hmm. And I have found that swingers tend to have the most open, honest communication skills between them because of the fact that they, you yeah. know, have sex with and, and share other people. Whereas a lot of monogamous couples don't even want to consider approach the idea of being attracted to anybody else in the world. I'm going mean, to hoard my real feelings away. Like, yeah. And also too, like, you know, there's women out there who truly believe that if their man watches porn, it's considered cheating, oh, which yeah. blows my mind. Yeah, me too. That, yeah, yeah. It, it blows my mind uh, too. Yeah, but yeah, yeah I, I remember the early relationships where you couldn't even mention that you're attracted to someone. No mm-hmm. one. Because yeah. everyone's so jealous and, it's just easier to be able to say, and, "Hey, I, I think I, I mean, think he's attractive," or and, well, and not to be all. Let's not get it so misunderstood, tender. though, because I mean, no matter what type of like situation or sharing, quote unquote, sharing right. situation is, you will have bouts of jealousy. It it, 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 ha- yeah. it, ha- yeah. it happens. I on mean, but the thing, ends, of, yeah, on both ends. Sometimes then, the third party's in. Yeah. I mean, like but, everybody can get a little jealous. But so. the important thing to just remember is just to be like, if you can't talk through it, yeah. don't do it. Wow. That needs to be on a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> you can- there you go. It's your motto. There you go. So when, what do you guys do when you encounter that situation? Mm. Like when there's jealousy, like, do you guys just sit down and talk it out? No, not right off the bat. Usually it's like, what's wrong with you? And then yeah. the other person's like, what's wrong with you? And then I'm- <laughs> There's nothing wrong with me because neither, n- nobody wants to admit that they're not the cool one at first. Yeah, you don't want to admit, but like, you I'm, tell. I don't like this game anymore. We've been together long enough that you can actually tell. So, like, if it's in the moment and there's jealousy, like, we've literally stopped 
scenes before and just yeah. like went and like talked it out and made sure that everybody was still cool and everything. Yeah. Um, especially when the scene partner is someone that has actually been around. So they're kind of willing to be like, Oh no, it's cool. If you need to take yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. um, but, uh, so yeah, I wouldn't say like first we might try to pretend like no, we're cool, but the other person's always going to know and they're going to want you to sit down because I don't really want to deal with the aftermath. I'd rather just kind of like hit it head on and mm -hmm. um, decide what part of that moment was is wrong. making you jealous or, yeah, or and, how to, and how to get around that because it can be little things that you know, mm -hmm. after you talk it out, you're like, well, that's not that big of a deal. It's so. just, I mean, really, I mean, the answer to your question though is just, just talk it. If you can't, I mean, really, it, it just just talk it out and be honest with each other. Yeah. I mean, it'd be like, oh, that one thing really, you know, I didn't like that so much, yeah. man, you know. And, and I mean, and if if the other person can't respect you for those feelings, then, you know, move on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So when you guys shoot these cuckolding videos, um, you are the one playing the cuckolds, correct, BD? Most of the time, yeah. But there have been a lot of other ones where I was actually the, I guess, uh, bull or whatever. I mean, there's a lot of terms for it. It, but, de it depends the fantasy, yeah, but um, the alpha, you know. Yeah, um, or or how it's ordered if it's a custom video. Yeah, um, they might order him, and but in a lot of the fantasies, yes, he is mm -hmm. the he is the cuckold, and we do do those kind of things in our own lifestyle. For um, fun. Yeah, it's not like our 24 seven lifestyle, no. which I think some fans sometimes might view it as. Uh, right, right. But I kind of look at it like if a couple is slightly into S and M, you know, mm -hmm. they bring it up once a month and then they hang it up for 30 days. You know what I mean? And then, <laughs> and then they come back to it when it's hot and heavy. And then that's kind of the way we deal with that in our own personal space. No, I mean, custom orders and stuff like that is still a bit different. I yeah. mean, we kind of do what we need to do to do our job and, and satisfy and create that person's fantasy. Yeah. So, And sometimes the video might just be me and him and, like, him and Chastity, or yep. they might want to include a third party, which right now, of course, is Obviously not, not. <laughs> <laughs> So we're changing it up a little bit. <laughs> right, right. You guys should do uh, – I did a, a live chat with my friend Bailey Rain the other day, and one of the people mentioned that in South Korea at sporting events, they're putting sex dolls in the audience seats. We saw that. We saw that. Nice. So we should just do that. So, so you guys should just stick a sex doll in the corner. Where do you go? That, that oh, would they, doing, uh, they were doing mannequins in restaurants in some cities. Yeah, I yeah, remember. I saw that too. New Jersey or something like that. They were like, that kind of I'm sorry, don't be creepy, man. <laughs> I don't want to be surrounded by a bunch of mannequins. I don't really know. It's a, it's, yeah, it's a very like Twin Peaks kind of feel. <laughs> yeah, it's <I> weird. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Okay. So let's move on. We've spent a lot of time on cuckolding. <laughs> wow. That was, that was hey, a lot of time. It's, it is, it's interesting yeah, to people, people right now. It's, in it's kind of a new fact that people are yeah. exploring. So. Well, and what's interesting too is that um, I did. I feel like I'm constantly referencing past podcasts right now, but I've just learned so much from my show. So I had um, Dr. Eleanor Yanaga on, and she's actually a medieval historian who studies specifically the medieval times and sex. And cuckolding was huge back then. Yes. That was like a big yeah. fetish back in like the Middle Ages, mm -hmm. um, because obviously you know, the sanctimony of marriage was a much stronger idea back then. And, um, the, the inability to get an erection could actually be grounds for divorce and your wife could take you to court and get a divorce from you. If you couldn't get a hard on, because that meant that you couldn't supply her with children. And yeah, that was pretty much the reason you got married, right? Everything was procreation back then. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. You had to be able to yeah. perform. If not, it's time to go. So you've come and the idea <laughs> Yeah, but the best part is, I'm going off on a tangent, but I just want to tell you guys this because I think it's hilarious, is that what they would do is they would bring a bunch of sex workers into the court and they would try to get the guy hard. Oh my like, God, hilarious. In front of the judge. <laughs> and if he couldn't do it, Love that. then she like had grounds for divorce. <laughs> wow, that's great. Hey, we can tie that into our story. The police yeah. we had to actually there you have go. To buy our videos to investigate them. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. So let's get to the actual. <laughs> let's get to the actual story because uh, that's why we're all here, right? So um, let's just take a quick commercial break, actually, before we go there, um, and hang tight, guys. We'll be right back. 
If you're here, it's probably because you're a fan of my podcast, Holly Randall Unfiltered. Well, that's great because I'm a fan of my podcast too. Now, if you don't know what Patreon is, it's a crowdfunding platform that allows people to make contributions on a monthly basis. Because this podcast costs money to make, maybe even more so than others. I'm obsessed with quality. So since the beginning, I have always recorded in a studio, had a professional sound engineer, and recorded professional video. All of these things cost money, as you can imagine. And I also made a pretty scary decision this year to cut down on my directing gigs so that I could focus more on this podcast, which is why I need your help now more than ever. But don't worry, I'm not asking you to give me something for nothing. In exchange for your contributions, I offer so many perks. For example, access to the live streams of all of my interviews, a bonus podcast that I do called My LA Porn Life, Q and A's where the stars answer your specific questions, behind the scenes interviews, merchandise such as mugs, shirts, and stickers, access to my private Snapchat, and so much more. You can join for as little as $5 a month and help me change the way the world sees the adult industry and sex work. So take a look around and see everything that I have to offer. I really hope that you'll join and be a part of our little community. All right, everybody, we're back. So we're going to dive right into the story, what brought us here today. So you guys were filming your clips, you were doing your thing, and then you got a call from the police or did they, they stormed into your home, right? So why don't you take over from here and tell us the story? Well, um... We were, I was two weeks postpartum. I had just had our third child. Which is, by the way, terrifying to me, because I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm pregnant. Yes, and thank yeah. you. And I've heard, like, you know, all the horror stories about recovering from childbirth and how, like, exhausted you are. So I can't imagine the fact that you were two weeks postpartum and this happening to you at that time. That's just terrible. It, 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 I think it really made it that much worse. Uh, but we were actually... The other two, we we had dropped off, um, thank no, goodness, to, daycare. To, to daycare because we were just trying to acclimate to having a third baby. Um, so they were going to be gone for the day. And um, we were about to just take a nap because we got the baby down. Um, and I hear a bunch of doors. And I saw shadows kind of moving in front of our house. And you immediately got a feeling of like, okay, something's not right because people just don't come over. Uh, you know, I was like, that's like one that. UPS man too many. Yes. And, um, <laughs> and then there was uh, knocking at the door. Luckily, we're extremely uh, cooperative people. He opened it and uh, I didn't see anything from the angle I was at from the couch. Uh, but I did hear someone asking him to step outside. And I was thinking, is that police? Like, how odd. <laughs> what are they doing here? Because um, I couldn't think of any reason why the police would be at our home. And then he comes back in with his hands behind his back and a whole bunch of officers just filter into the room with me and the baby, um, which was our living room. And uh, they start telling me, you know, like, do you remember making a public video? That's what we're here for. Sorry, real quick, can I ask how many officers? When they when they took when they knocked on the door and uh, and I answered the door, they said, uh, you know, call me by my real name, and I, and and I was like, yes. And he goes, can you step outside for me, please? And I, was, I stepped outside because I mean there there was I mean. I can share a picture with you at a later date, but like we, uh, our neighbors, which we're, we're friends with now and we're not at the top, um, took pictures of the cop cars and there was, I don't know, 15, 20 cars. I mean, there were about 20 to 30 officers. They make the full SUV. Yeah. Wait, whoa, yeah. whoa, hold on. 20 to 30 officers to yeah. come talk to two people <laughs> about creating, yeah. allegedly creating public, like, masturbation videos you guys weren't like a terrorist cell yeah. or right. anything like that 
like later, we, 30 cops. later we found out and the reason why there were so many is that there were three different investigative units that were on, investigating on, on, our, on, case. Our, on our case so three different they all three different came in at the, at three the different same, departments at the same time so yeah they filled the living the room living the room. whole house they just they came in and started taking stuff immediately. Yeah. Like there was no really talking. They set us both down on the couch and said, "Look, you know you already know what you did because then you know you are under arrest." And they had a warrant. Yeah, they did. Yes. They did. Yeah, and they showed it to us, you know, and they were like, "You yeah. are under arrest for uh, uh, adult uh, uh, adult pornography and or excuse me, adult pornography, <laughs> but pornography and uh, creating uh, adult content in public and right. just the little laundry list that they go through so they can come in your house and and pest." Right. You. Right. Um, they came in and automatically started confiscating absolutely everything that phones was first. electronic. Like phones, you know, yeah. like everything. So we're sitting there. Um, phones, they wouldn't tablets, move laptops. from the couch or, or anything. Yeah. And uh, they had him come out here. This is actually like what? Our studio. Studio space. Man cave, uh, studio. Other half is a catch-all for everything else that uh, <laughs> seems to come into our home. And... Uh, we keep all of our equipment and stuff locked in drawers and closets and stuff like that, separated from our children. And um, they made him go through all of, and they confiscated everything. Halloween costumes that had gotten mixed in, all kinds of stuff that they just kind of took with them all. They brought me out here because we had locks on everything like that. Yeah. Um, so. so, you know. I never got to leave the couch. Yeah, so no one time. could really pilfer through our other side of our lives. Um, so they were like, well, where are the keys? And I showed them where the keys were and they unlocked all the drawers and they went through all our stuff and the dressers and laid everything out. But you know, one of the things that really gets me and, and, and something I don't think anybody could actually fathom is could you imagine every fantasy, every dirty thought that you've ever had, like literally rub in your face? Like, I mean, it was, I mean, every out, toy, every, I mean, they're, I mean, like, they're giggling about it as they're bagging them up. Yeah, I mean, it's, it was, yeah. it was, it was like, you know, it was, yeah. it was pretty rough. I bet they are. And then didn't you say that you heard, um, one of them, like one of the officers kind of express some kind of disbelief at the fact that they were called in such big numbers to your house for what is kind yes. of a pretty minor offense. Yes. They said that they normally would not. Several. You know, yeah. Several, several of them told us that they were normally times. I mean, um, would go, this isn't normally something we would look into. This is something we would never look into. We got an anonymous tip. And if we hadn't have gotten the anonymous tip, we would have never come here. Um, at that point, they had only planned, they charged us with felonies, um, but they had only planned to, I guess, in the end, give oh. us a misdemeanor, but they couldn't charge us with that because the videos were already too old and past the mm -hmm. statute of limitation when they were made. So, the, I mean, I guess the only way they would even mm -hmm. come in with the warrant was under felony. It's kind of neat to actually do this interview because of the previous ones that we've done, like we, we still were limited with information yeah. of what actually happened, why it happened and yada, yada. Right. right. And, and then now that we understand that, that, that they had spent those three different departments now, Spent so many hundreds, and I, what I was told from an informant, <laughs> I call him an informant, uh, hundreds and hundreds of man hours were spent for two solid weeks. They tapped our internet, they tapped our cell phones, they uh, monitored our house, uh, and everything for two weeks, and we had no idea. I mean, and you got to think, she was two weeks postpartum, which means they watched us from the hospital yeah. for two weeks. Wow. Yeah, before they came. They tapped everything. And I, you know, if you're gonna bust somebody for something, why don't you try it like not while you're having a baby? Because I guarantee you, ain't much going on right there. <laughs> the timing was a little off. Yes. <laughs> but I mean, it, it's 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 uh it's disconcerting to know that it was some kind of tip off, and that the all of these departments and all of them were brought in because it was supposed to be such a big deal because it was a possible thing that involved children. Because only because now we had kids. Yes. That's it. We were content creators that had children, and we live in the Bible Belt, and they were, look out, we're a target. Yep. Yeah, that's that's one of those really dangerous things. I mean, you guys probably know the case of Mercedes Carrera, who hasn't even had a court date yet. She's been in jail for over a year. 
Um, and who really knows what happened in that situation. But, you know, uh, she was content creator and she had a child and she had a vet, you know, and had not a good relationship with an ex. And um, it's it's a scary thing. And I mentioned to you guys kind of before the show, you know, we had an incident where the um, social services were called on my mom mm-hmm. because somebody said that they were shooting porn. I, I have a sister who's eight years younger than me when my little sister was around, which, of course, they never did. Um, and somebody had to come out and interview my sister and my mom about it. And nothing ever came of it. I mean, it, it, they, the social services woman, actually, I believe she even apologized when she left. She said, they did everything sorry, we have to, yeah. Yeah. we have to follow up on this, yeah. Right. Yeah. but you yeah. know, I can see that there's nothing here, but some people are just so paranoid, you know, the idea that you could be an adult performer and have children and like separate those two things. Like it doesn't have. And I think some of the times that we keep our kids with such a shield of innocence, even more than most parents that don't create adult mm-hmm. content. And so, I think that's honestly because of what we do. Yeah. Like we shield like, them. They can't go to school and say anything. Yeah. We're like, no. At all. So we're just not going to let them even watch anything that their peers are watching. So, um, <laughs> you get Three minutes of YouTube but, today. Enjoy yes, it. But the <laughs> officers, I mean, even the, I would say the head officer, uh, at one point in time, I remember him standing in front of me. You could almost watch his face, like, change into yeah. that, like, oh, man, you know, what am I doing here moment. Um, and I remember he may have been looking around the room, and it was so off the wall, some of his comments. Like, it's so clean in here, and normally the houses we come to aren't so clean, or... This isn't something we would normally check into. Mm. He kept bringing up the anonymous tip a no. lot. Um, I He only spoke to them. They only questioned him separately from me. No one ever tried to really question me. Um, but that head officer, when we went in the courtroom, he did pull me aside when he was pulling out his paperwork. And he was like, would you say you're a good person? And I made sure I noticed that he filled that out for like the judge and everything. I could tell they were doing everything in that moment to think we've messed up. We've, mm. we've, we've overstepped. They, they, re- we've... they released us in well, like within two hours. I never like, went they, in they the were, jail cell. Yeah, she like, never even went in the jail cell. They I, I was called, like, the they, there was a, there was like an emergency bring in the judge moment. There it was only us and because the media that had heard about it and moved in. Um, and it was kind of, we need them. We need bail. It was a Friday. We Mm -hmm. shouldn't have gotten out for the weekend, but it was, we have to get them home. And so he did have to go in a cell while we were getting booked, but I never even went inside. We basically sat in the lobby for a couple hours and they were like, well, you know, we really don't have anything else on you. Serious charges. It always felt, and the way they came in at first with so many officers, it always felt off. Mm-hmm. Like it's always felt off how they handled it with. But this was why it was off because the person that told us that came forward later after Gustavo's article said that he was basically a desk jockey at that local police department. And then he read, recognized my name from just previous acquaintances. And, uh, and he overheard the fact that they had spent so many hundred hours of surveillance on us that they could not just let us go. They had to find something. And they only oh, so they had to justify all the man hours that they spent yeah, because of the money that the state spent looking wow. like nothing. They had to pin us with something. Yeah. So they, wow. you know, so instead of pinning us with that misdemeanor that we obviously ended up with, they tried pinning her with twelve felonies, was fourteen, I think. fourteen felonies. When they first came here, and mine was nine. Yes. So yeah. can you tell me exactly what these felonies were? Three were for the public public performance performance, yep. um, which they even the prosecutor, the assistant prosecutor that had to spend most of the time working on our case, she knew our lawyer pretty well, mm-hmm. and she would honestly say, even watching the videos, he said with her, she would say all of this if they were caught in that would have been a misdemeanor. Mm-hmm. Fine. I still think it's funny on. they had to watch it. 
Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so the whole time she maintained that that's what it would be in the end. But so the three felonies for public content, they were charging me for mm-hmm. location of the, of Each the one. major video. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, promotion of the content on through Twitter. social media. So even like those auto tweets and stuff like that. And here's the okay. third. Here's the third though. Here's the ringer. Here's the one that was a law made in Arkansas in the 1940s. <laughs> Cannot own pornography. Yeah. So, or or produce. Or that was made, that, or, those yeah, were the so, last big felonies. You cannot own a pornographic film in the state of Arkansas. So, and actually selling it is then considered could be a felony yep. offense. That even our lawyer said is not something that the state would. They knew. Act they upon. knew that they had nothing. Mm-hmm. I mean, or even our lawyer said they have nothing. So yeah. they are just reaching. They're going to try to pin you guys yeah. with everything possible and make this sound terrible, and you know, blow it up in the the news and everything else. So this. Uh, you know, prosecuting attorney could win his judgeship the following two years. Yeah, but um, mm-hmm. the uh, the promoting on Twitter. I remember sitting and the guy that um, was doing the booking and entering things in the computer. He couldn't even <laughs> find how to enter that in because he goes, "We don't arrest people for this." There's not. They even, couldn't find it in the system. Like to put us in the, in the system, system on, for this. Uh, He's like, what'd you get in trouble for again? Yes. He's like, hang on, let me, let me Google that. Because there's like uh-huh. a code for each offense or something, yes. right? Yeah. No, they had to make them up. They, yeah. they had to make them up. Like he had to type them in, watch the guy type it in the system. Because it just wasn't pre in there. Because it's Nobody awesome. had ever been arrested for it. <laughs> yeah. So. so, okay. So, so there's an outdated law from the 1940s that you can't own or distribute porn in Arkansas. Do you, are there no sex shops or anything like that there? Yeah, there are. a few. There's a few. Um, I don't it's know. Usually we did what, it's try usually, to come into our town, but we you know you have you have dry, near a church. Well, in the south, you know, you have dry counties and wet counties for alcohol, right? Well, right. typically they push adult bookstores, things like that, into the wet counties, yeah. and and that's just kind of how they they're like, oh, just kind of shove it under the rug, you know? Oh, we'll just we won't we won't talk about that or mess with that. But whenever they made such a mistake and had so much egg on their face because of our situation, they didn't care. They were reaching and grasping for anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's interesting how those laws work because I I know that the few obscenity cases that have been tried and gone through, like for example, Max Hardcore is one. Um, he got jailed for obscenity, and it was because he accidentally shipped a DVD with some kind of sex act that was illegal in one of the states um, to that state. Right. And that's how they nailed him. Totally. It could have even been Arkansas. I don't remember. I need to look it up. But you know, basically, it was distributing like what was considered illegal, like in that state, sure. illegal pornography, an accidental shipment. Um, and that's how they nailed him. You know, in the state of Tennessee, sodomy is absolutely illegal. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> yeah, it's really it is a really blurry line with porn in a lot of states. Um, California is one of the places that is fortunate because we had the Freeman case, which is actually went all the way to the Supreme Court, which was the case where they were trying to shut down porn on um, the idea that it was pimping and pandering. And it actually, um, Hal Freeman, who it was against, he won. And that's technically what made porn like legal in California. In every other state, it's like, because there hasn't been a precedent set by like a court case. Yeah, right, um, right, right. It's kind of like this weird gray area. Yeah. So it sounds like that's kind of what you guys ran into. Yeah, as long as it doesn't get questioned, they're not going to mess with it. And it's definitely not right. I would have never thought with, I mean, because there are are other Arkansas performers that are out there making comments. Content that are that are more well known than me, so I didn't think, oh, this is a felony offense <laughs> that I am ever of going to not. have to work. No, the only For thing sure. we had in our mind when we set out to film that particular niche was, you know, what we'll just be very careful, make sure there's no witnesses, make sure no one sees us, make sure you know. I mean, and we, and we were extremely careful, and that's the reason why we didn't get busted when we did it. Instead, we got busted a year and a half later because there were no witnesses, there yeah. were no complaints, no one ever knew about it. Um. <laughs> so, Can you guys tell us specifically what what those three clips were? 
Um, well, actually, risky video was a was a it was a, com a combination of quick because and, yeah um, three different locations. So one part of it, we were in a restaurant, and really most of that scene is me eating, and I am actually wearing um, the oh my god mm -hmm. the oh my so, god. Um, and so it's kind it's of just, known that I'm wearing device. it. Um, he has one of the cameras on the table. You really can't You don't see anything. There's much, no nudity. Uh, or really hear it because it's fairly low so. in such a cr crowded restaurant. Um, so there were some flashing in my underwear in a parking lot. Of course, I was kind of hid by the door. Mm hmm and everything um a lot of the scenes when i did go in the home depot were yet again walking past people trying to get as far enough past people that they wouldn't see me and then occasionally like like flipping the skirt off. no she just, uh, she, like, just really had a, she had a short summer yeah. dress a short summer dress on and like she would you know peek around the corner see anybody wide yeah. anybody wasn't watching she just kind of did a little flip and then you know yeah. put it back down i mean it's really all there was and i think the most controversial part of the whole thing and I'm not saying it was the smartest decision ever. If I went back in time, if I would oh, be yeah, like, no. <laughs> that's a great idea. And I probably would have thought about a lot more. Um, was It was a really hot summer day. Uh, it was around my birthday, which is why it's called Risky Me Day. Um, and we went to a big state park in the area. Um, really, it's a huge forest area. It has trails. Um, it has so many different kinds of like playgrounds and, and different stuff on it. And, um, no one was really there at all. Um, the parking lot we were in was very empty. It was too hot. And I had gotten out to go to the bathroom, um, in one of those little bathrooms. And I remember in the raw footage, you can see me looking out and like kind of looking around. I'm getting, doing, she, like, came, like, no she came out of the bathroom so shy because like, I'm, I'm already have the car like parked next to this, you know, indoor outhouses that they have through the parks and stuff. Yeah. And, and I got the camera like right here when she comes out and she comes out and she's like, and she I like, looks around. around the building. I was like, there's nobody and, yeah, here. And she's like, there's no one here. All. So she just kind of pulls up the summer dress, does a little thing and then gets back in the car. I mean, but what was bad, I wasn't thinking about about a hundred yards behind her. And it was, I mean, it was almost the length of a football field behind her. Um, was the child's playground. So it's empty, but so like still. when they yeah. went to steal, uh, or, you know, capture still photographs and stuff from the video as evidence, oh, sure. of course, of yeah. course they went for that one. Yeah. And, of course they did. And most yeah. people think like, um, most people like I've even seen like other people in the business arguing. They were like, so you were on the playground. Can you believe? Like, I never actually touched the playground. Were you on the seesaws? No, we didn't touch them, dude. Come on. Uh, but the rest <laughs> of that video, actually the more explicit parts, um, where I used the dildo and he actually <clears> did an uh, end in a VJ. We actually hiked. Oh, wait. <laughs> And we hiked. Uh, we walked off. so far. We walked so far. It went into another, like, nature refuge. It was it was on a cliff side. So, I mean, like, yeah. we couldn't even get down to the other park that was at, down at the valley. Like, I mean, we were on a cliff side. At, we're just this end of the woods ended. It was where the property ended. Yeah. And so, I mean, we walked to the extent without killing ourselves <laughs> <laughs> to make sure that we weren't seen or anything. Yes, and, right. and it was that one. And then another clip we did get in trouble for was a blowjob in a dressing room of a pretty empty store. Very empty store. So, but it was all self-contained within the dressing room. Mm. Very, sol very solid, yeah. quiet, too. Like, uh, so. But again, there were never any witnesses. And, and it's funny because I've been saying this for three years straight now with everybody I've ever talked to. I'm like, there were never witnesses we were never caught. How, how, why am, why am I going through this? You know, because if we like, would have got caught in the act, it just would have been bad. Don't do that again. Yeah. Here, give me your, give me your money for your fine. And then you go along your way. But instead, well, it actually happened like, um, about a year after ours or to a, a girl about 30 minutes up the road was caught in the act and hers was literally in the act, no, she got caught like, in the act. within a couple of weeks kind of handled with her fines handled and really the only reason it was known about was she wasn't put all over the paper she kind of actually put it on her twitter and stuff herself mm. that it happened mm. um, where our names before we even made it home our names had been released with our uh screen names along with i mean was it the daily mail and stuff that had went on his facebook took pictures oh, the daily mail is the worst 
Yeah, they do. They're terrible. Like they with our children, and yeah, they they blurred out the faces, but they they released those alongside of pictures of me like topless and stuff right next to the pictures of like of our course. Children. Yeah. yeah. So, and then, and then our location was put out and, and just everything before we could even make it home, pick up our children. The worst thing yeah. as a content creator, and you got to think about this, you know, as content creators, you live behind a persona. I mean, you're no different than any other entertainer, but you're living behind a persona. And when that wall is broken and torn down between you and those 50 to 60,000 people that know you kind of, but don't really, <laughs> You know, don't know your real name, don't know where you live, but now they do. Now they know your real name, your house, your kid's name, your family's name. I mean, like, I mean, that's what was the most harmful part and what scared us the most. Because when they did all that, I mean, the tabloids and the local news, I mean, we were on, we were on, oh my God, TV in Washington State, Ohio, California. Stuff we didn't even know about for a long time. Like, he would have someone contact yeah. and be like, did you know they said something about y'all on Howard's hey, song? We're like, yeah, when? We're, yeah, when? Evidently, and they were like, months ago. And we we're like, oh. Evidently, <laughs> uh, who was who was the, like, it was mentioned on Howard Stern, and it was mentioned on, uh, what's the guy, Steve Harvey. Yes. Well, Steve Harvey mentioned it on his show. And I was like, when did this happen? And how do I get a copy of that? Did anyone send it to me? <laughs> Oh, it's <laughs> random. Yeah. But I think for almost the full three years, because uh, the local NEA report constantly does pieces on us. Like anytime it would get quiet. Twice a year. So we always have to get He'd quiet. Bust us out. And our lawyer would say, now maybe mm-hmm. it's the time it's quiet. And then in, here would come the NEA report talking about how we had a court date coming up. Well, it was always moving. <laughs> um, and. Uh, I don't know. We just could never get away from it. So it was just, yeah. like, I guess we have to embrace it. That's something else to touch on too, is the fact that the, you know, they hunted us for so long and everything it happened the way it did. And they drug it out for three years because, you know, egg on their face, they didn't know what to do. You know, the, 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 the lead, lead prosecutor was up for a judgeship. If he would have went hard on us, he would have lost votes. If he would have went soft on us, he would have lost votes. So he chose not to touch it. So it got continued for three years. No one would touch our case with a 10 foot pole. And we were even told that by lower staff of the prosecuting yeah, exactly. team, they were like, he just doesn't want to touch it. And I'm like, what kind of bullshit is that? I was like, yeah. so you mean to tell me like, my wait. life is in limbo for three years because this, Stupid son of a bitch is trying to win votes. I mean, you know, that's kind of the way I felt. I mean, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I feel like all of our lives are in limbo. <laughs> right. So, right now, especially. Yes. Yes. Win are, votes or whatnot. Yeah. Exactly. Now yeah, is like a perfect example of that. So that but doesn't so surprise many, me at all. So many times, um, I'll happily pay your fine. Just, just let, let me, let me, let me, let me do it. it. Right. <laughs> Right, right. So, so they eventually um, allowed you guys to do a plea bargain, right? Yeah. And what? So, what did that come down to? That was a buck a piece. With well, it was we Unsuper- led unsupervised. three misdemeanor yeah. public indecencies for the. Uh, I guess they just took down the three felonies yep. from those clips and had us charge. Uh, for the That's all indecency. it was. They just they took down the three clips they want to charge us with, which we had other public stuff too, by the way. But they were just done. They didn't care. Yeah. They 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 had, they just they just wanted to grab a couple of them cool. at random. Probably they probably put them in a hat and had a pot. Look, I don't know. I think that yeah. probably looked the worst and could be used around the community as like, oh, look what they did. Mm-hmm. Look what they did. As yeah, making, yeah. Hopefully making them mad enough. But really, most of the comments would always be like, okay. Yeah, but or, it, or, or, I end, at that bar, or something like that. In the end, it uh, was just the misdemeanors and a small uh, fine, small fine, and unsupervised unsupervised probation, probation for the next year. Mm-hmm. What does that mean? That means they don't care. Yeah, I mean, really, that that means it well, means like don't commit any more. We're gonna just trust you not to commit any more crimes. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Like, now, now, don't, don't go banging in public. <laughs> That's basically it. That's 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 it. They're that's like, you can keep too. making you can keep making your content, just not in public. And I'm like, don't worry about that. You don't have to. Worry. Yeah, I was gonna. I'm gonna say, are you guys ever gonna film another public? I'm gonna pretend that never happens. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I know we can't, but you know. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> what about the the clips? Because you said that you had to leave them up, right? Because it was part of the investigation. Are they still up there, or did you take them down after this I'm whole sorry, thing wrapped, or? Space. 
some some, some places sites. some places they are still mm -hmm. up. Like on Hub, it's actually unlisted right now, so you can't you can't view it right now. And um, the only reason why is because after Gustavo's very moving article, let's let's just say that that video got a lot of attention, so yeah. we had to unlist it for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> So, so yeah, it'll probably okay. go back up though. But um, I was gonna say, like, ma can't you like make some money out oh, of it? Oh yeah, no, we, yes. we did. We just yes. it, we caught a little bit of like a more a little bit negative flack than we cared to for a second. And yeah, I understand. A lot of questions, a lot of people like just bombarding her, and I was like, okay, just for a second. Yeah, yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, so with the felonies, I mean. If you guys, if they'd really landed those felonies on you, you guys would have had to register as sex offenders, right? They said that, the, I mean, yeah, they I'm sure. you with that? They, yeah, 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 obviously. It would have been that. And honestly, Which is we insane. were insane. Yeah, oh, yeah. And, yeah. and we were so worried about that, even if they would have just dropped them down to felonies. I mean, that kept me awake at night, yeah. thinking that even if they dropped them down that low, would they still stick us with that? Yeah, part of that you know always at the school mm -hmm. and stuff so it's kind yeah because like, i mean we go to all our all our kids things for school yeah, and yeah. everything and we're there and we wouldn't be able to do any of that and that yeah. would have sucked yeah it's yeah. actually a real nightmare being on the sex offenders registry not that one would think that it wouldn't be but what was a real eye opener for me because i don't have any experience with it thank god but uh, i don't know if you guys ever listened to john ronson's the butterfly effect it was this like three hour podcast that he did about basically about how free porn, Pornhub specifically actually, um, kind of has this butterfly effect on society. And he like did all these other, all these different stories about how free porn was affecting people. And one of them was uh, studying this underage kid. I think he was 16 or 17 at the time and he was autistic. So he was somebody who didn't really understand like social boundaries. And he watched some, free porn movie on some tube site and i think it was like a non-consent um video or something like that and then he thought that if he repeated that to the girl that he had a crush on that she would like that yeah and of course she did not take that well told her parents they came after him and they hit him, they put him on the sex offenders registry he, and he is, he's a virgin and he's like, he was like 16 or 17 at the time. And they just interviewed his mom and they went through all these things that he can't do. You know, you have to keep a certain distance from school, yeah. um, yeah. anything where there are children, fairs, like this kid, this virgin kid can't do anything. Uh -oh. And this, and you're on it for like your entire life. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, and it, it's. Would it's be insane. That, that, that was one of the was one of our biggest fears. Yeah. I mean, like the fines suck and like everything else would have sucked too. But like honestly, just our kids mean a lot to us, and I know it, that's hard for people to understand because you know they've never been able to do anything. People look <laughs> people look at us. The people who actually know what we do look at us with you know tinted glasses, and, yeah. you know, and and they automatically assume, like we mentioned before, just because we have children that we're a different breed of parent. We're not. Matter of fact, we're thinking we're a little bit more protective than most. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah, no. We, I, we know the perverted people that are out there, okay? Yeah, so, like, <laughs> yeah, I think if anything, you guys are probably better prepared to try to protect your children from early exposure to Predators. online pornography. Predators. Yeah, because you understand, yes. you yeah. know where it is. Okay. You know the programs yeah. you use to block it. Yeah. Like you're, you're in, you have that kind of intimate knowledge. Mine's so um, nice. Like, why can't I have Wi-Fi on my tablet? I mean, you, you can't right now. You can't now. right now. You're seven. There's Give reasons. It a minute. We'll explain it to you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So how has this whole experience affected your lives? Are you guys still in the same neighborhood? Has it made it difficult for you guys to be, like, social with people at your kids' schools? Has it affected your kids in any way? Um, we are still in that same house. <laughs> So, mm -hmm. so yes, same neighborhood. In fact, our neighbors came and introduced themselves after everything kind of came out. Um, and no, I don't feel like at first it made it harder to be social. It, I but was, that was our own paranoia. Yeah, it was. Yep. I didn't want to come out of the house because our area is small. It seems so conservative and it's yep. very small and it, fairly tight knit. Even we're kind of the newer people to mm -hmm. it. I mean, we're we're from Arkansas, but we're newer 
to this area and don't know people as well. So I was kind of worried about being social, but we realized pretty quick that a lot of people really didn't a care. A lot of people Once they knew us had our backs. And kind of what happened. Know. Like they were like, oh, no one saw you. This mm -hmm. is this is how it, and uh, they thought the whole thing was crazy. So it got easier to be social. The community was silent for the most part. We never really caught flack from the community. As a matter of fact, it was more of a it was more of a, a silent encouragement to yeah. don't let the state fuck you over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people yeah. were like, "Are they still messing with you guys? I can't believe this is three years <laughs> yeah. now. They're still messing." I mean, we always do like a major Halloween display, like so every yeah. year. So like we all have hundreds of people come come every do year. that and everything. And I remember. One of the ladies a couple of houses down, and I don't talk to her very often, but she, she came in because she's always excited for it. She came in. When she came out, and her kids around, too, and she goes, have they left y'all the fuck alone yet? And this is like in front of her. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, I was like well. <laughs> we're like, we don't like to talk about, about it right now. now. <laughs> but, um, but no, and they were actually angry because she said she couldn't yeah. leave her home that day. So they were lying, the all said, the the the, were lined up on the street. It's, a, it's like a cul-de-sac. So, like, you know, you have to go down the end, turn around, come back. But when all the cop cars are here, people couldn't get in and out of their homes. That was how many cop cars was blocking the street. Yeah. But so, yeah, but no, the community actually, it, they, I'm not going to say the word embrace because it definitely wasn't that. <laughs> but they weren't like, I don't know, it's where I look very really like. They didn't ostracize us. Yeah, completely. not as much I mean, as, no, we were scared of that for a long time. That we were. You know, if we stepped outside, we yeah. would get hit by, like, a poison arrow from somebody <laughs> or something. And There's still some moments, though, that, like, we went to a flag football, mm -hmm. one of our kids' flag football games, and uh, you did hear a couple be like, oh, that's that. That's, those are those people. Yeah, you would, so you'll, you still know that that happens from time we to time. Even, we even created a, an account uh, because uh, t we have a tendency to go back, even sometimes for fun, to do live broadcast shows. Yeah. Uh, uh, on certain sites and stuff. And we actually created an account called Those Fucking People. Because that's what they <laughs> think of us as. Like, we, 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 we got in trouble and put the town on the map for the pornography. We have this loud, insane <laughs> display. They were like, they probably like those. They were like, it's those people. people. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it sounds like overall you didn't receive the kind of flack that you would have expected from your community that that these charges against you you know it see it sounds like the charges against you would make you fear that that they would reflect like how your community would see you right but it seems like everybody felt that everything was completely blown out of proportion I'm it wasn't sure just it, you guys i'm sure it did but the ones that were brave enough to talk to us were the ones mm -hmm. that we heard the most, obviously, right. so those were the ones that yeah. we heard going, you know, fight the power. Those were the ones that we heard more. Now, I guarantee you the other 93% <laughs> of the community were more like, I ain't touching or talking about that with nobody. <laughs> so. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, I think more from, I mean, you would have a few friends that just kind of like disappeared. That's what hurt me the most. Weird. I mean, most people mm -hmm. didn't know what we did in the first place. Nobody but, knew what uh, we did for a living. But then, right. and, and then when they found out, they kind of disassociated family, themselves. Friends, well, I mean, we lost everybody at least for a good amount of time. Yeah. I mean, people yeah. would not even, I mean, we never got Some people any, were just scared to talk to us. They were like, oh, I don't know what to say. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but for my family entirely, just kind of pretty much out the door. So, um, let's talk about quickly uh who you suspect the person who tipped them off might be hmm. well the way that's a new development right yes, it's it is. very it new is. so I'm, I'm still trying to process all of this um the person said that whoever tipped them off had been in our home right before the tip off now if you'll remember i was just giving birth it was the day so after we really don't have anyone in our home all that often anyways. Nope. So um, it's primarily family. Um, and so that immediately made me go, well, that cuts it down to four people. My mother, my brother, an aunt, his father, that's laughable. <laughs> he's He's been the, old, the school, old school hippie didn't do anything, I promise. <laughs> um, 
And apparently the way the tip off was given, and I think it's absolutely crazy that they went to this extent on this, is apparently someone claimed that they saw what a curtain and some kid toys around it and we might be filming child pornography uh, here's like okay the building the studio we're in now let me just paint a little picture it's a thousand square foot building that's off the side of our house yeah. the people who own the house before it was an old school mechanic so it was a bad garage i mean it's a thousand square foot it's a big building but anyways we we walled it up and put doors and windows in it. So it's not a garage anymore. Now we use it for a studio and a catch all for our Halloween stuff and old kid toys. Yeah. So whenever I let her, my brother-in-law, whatever in here and I, and I showed him around like, Hey, check it out. How we closed off the building. No, and my dad's carpenter did a good job. You know, y'all, y'all just chummy, chummy talk. Yeah. And, and little did I know that it was a scout the whole time. And, and he saw like kid toys behind like some curtains that we had up and and all the while i was actually planning on filming and i did end up filming it a uh, a cover video for youtube of my kids doing the uh, smells like teen spirit video for nirvana because it's like their favorite song ever for some weird reason so we were wow. like, play on the like little fake drums and stuff that mm -hmm. we had and everything but no most of the building at the end of my pregnancy was not in use for anything like mm -hmm. pornographic related uh our green screen was hanging up because you just, that's the way to store it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And no, really we, that and put a, we a had drawer. been changing kids' rooms around um, and moving everything. The older two were going to be put together, so the baby would have a nursery. And that day, our oldest had a seizure, had to go to the hospital. So we kind of just crammed everything in here. So that's really probably what they saw around the. And it then we kind of shut this space off, went on to have a baby not thinking anything about it mm. um wasn't planning on going back of to film weeks yeah and we were just trying to rest uh, the conclusion up. that the conclusion that someone would draw from the fact that you guys are just trying to like clean house a little bit wow well that's one hell of a story guys um i'm glad that it all ended up working out much better than it could have right and i appreciate you guys coming on and kind of telling us no thank you telling us your cautionary tale that's yeah. um because you know the the public nudity stuff is a very popular niche and and people do it a lot and um i i do feel that people do it i'm not even sure that what i would call what you guys did reckless but i've seen some pretty reckless oh, I've seen some gross public ones. videos yeah. out there where i'm like dude what are you doing people yeah. in the produce section using yeah. the produce for certain things and then putting it yeah. back yeah that's what you gotta draw the line somewhere man it would say there's something yeah. different between our in the woods knowing that there. Oh, and, and totally. the last one was a little more reckless yeah. but yeah it was it's an eye opener because that's not what they were here for. So that tells anyone in the industry that How is easily. not in California to really look in those laws and the type yeah. of people in your life, the kind of story that can be wove. But also in California too. That's anywhere. You know, yeah, if they anywhere. really want to get you for yeah. something. They're going yeah. to find yeah. something. So they yeah. doesn't really worry where you're at. But, yeah. but you know, we, we really appreciate you. Uh, appreciate you, Holly. Same and, time. And yeah, taking the time to do this for us and just to get our message out there. And really, we want to reiterate that our message isn't like, ha ha, we did this and we got a misdemeanor. No, our, our message is like, really check in to, to what you're doing. I mean, if you, if you decide to follow this path and, you know, know your laws and, and know, yourself better. know where you live. Don't be so reckless. I mean, right? Be careful. So. I mean, really, this is more of an advocacy message than, you know, yeah, yeah. us trying to on ourselves. Right. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Um, okay, can you tell everybody where they can find you online? Maybe plug any websites that you guys want to plug before we wrap up? Okay, you can search me, uh, Maven Doll, on YouTube, Pornhub, and Minivids. Those are going to be my major sites where most releases will go first. And, Twitter. And also you can find me on Twitter under Maven Doll. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And if you didn't care, you can find me, BDSM, <laughs> at Twitter. You will find him through a tweet through me. Just look, just look, find her first. It's easier. <laughs> <laughs> I really thank you so much for talking to us. You are amazing, by the way. You're, you're amazing. Yeah. Your story, what you've done with your life, the advocacy, you know, and the, and the things and the directions that you do, everything. You're amazing, lady. Thank you so much. Mm. 
Oh, thank you. I really appreciate that. You guys are awesome. Been a lot of fun to talk to you. <laughs> yay. <laughs> well, uh, yay. I know. That's, I'm really bad at accepting compliments. I'm like, so is she, dude. <laughs> yay. Thanks. Oh, Wait, thanks. 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 <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, well, thank you again, guys, for coming on and telling us your story. Um, you guys, thank you for listening or watching wherever you are. You can find me at Holly Randall on Twitter and on Instagram. Don't forget, I have a Facebook, facebook.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered. You can support the show through Patreon, patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered. And also sign up for my newsletter at hollyrandallunfiltered.com. Um, we do a special bombshell of the month every month now with bonus content. So um, you definitely want to check that out. Thank you guys so much for listening or watching. And we'll see you next week.